Hi, I'm Catherine Gray, founder of She Angel Investors and co-founder of the She Angels Foundation. I'm also the podcast host of Invest in Her and an award-winning producer, author, and TEDx speaker. Our show, Invest in Her, features phenomenal female founders and funders. As you know, women receive less than 2% of venture capital funding. Our series is about accelerating the funding of women by connecting them to funding resources. Let's meet today's guest. Welcome to this week's episode of Invest in Her. I'm your host, Catherine Gray, founder of She Angel Investors and co-founder of the She Angels Foundation. And I am so excited to have on who the founder of the Bad Bitch Empire is, Lisa Carmen Wang. Lisa, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Well, Lisa, uh, you have such an incredible background. I don't even know where to start. Uh, let's start with that you are Olympic level, four-time U.S. champion gymnast uh, in the U.S. Gymnast Hall of Fame. Hello. Uh, that's incredible. But then what an interesting pivot, which brings us to today's show called Invest in Her, of course, which is that right out of Yale, you started working with a $50 billion hedge fund. Let's talk about that because not many women are in that arena. And uh, that, that, that right there makes you a bad bitch in my book. Uh, so, and, and also I wanna say, I love that you're using the word bitch. It's like we're taking it back and making it positive. My, my friend just launched a book too called uh, Pitch the Bitch, Kelly Wingate. And I was like, everybody's using this word. It used to be like a negative and now I love it. We're taking our power back, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So and let, the the word choice is very intentional because it's exactly to what you've said is that the word bitch has been used to weaponize women's power against us. Bitch was used to describe the woman who asserts her voice, who asserts her boundaries, who doesn't take disrespect, who walks away from people who don't see her value. And to call that woman a bitch is really, at the end of the day, a compliment. And so reclaiming not just the bitch, but the bad bitch term to say we understand and we step into our power, that is a very intentional word choice that gives women power back. I agree with you 100%. And I love that you have this book coming out in September, HarperCollins, The Bad Bitch Business Bible. Uh, everyone's going to be needing that for sure. And and tell us a little bit about that book. Like, you know, what, what's a, what are we going to learn from it? Well, at the core, the root of it is really about breaking free of good girl brainwashing. Good girl brainwashing is all of the societal and media messages that have trained women to stay small, silent, subordinate, pleasing, perfect, nice, for the sake of being accepted by the status quo. And while get it, being a good girl can get you in the door, it gets you the good grades, it gets you initial approval, if you want to secure the bag. It's the bad bitch who becomes a leader. It's the woman who takes charge of her body, her boundaries, her bank account, who understands her value, who comes to the table and knows what she is worth and knows what she brings to the table and isn't willing to deal with that disrespect. So this book is really the 10 commandments to break free of good girl brainwashing, take charge of your body, your boundaries, your bank account, specifically in the workplace and what it means to take up space to assert your voice, to command respect, to command your worth and your value, to also become unapologetically worthy and wealthy through learning how to love money as a tool for impact, learning how to build a business that actually is good for yourself, for the world, and how to ultimately invest in female-led businesses because the it's no mistake that the most the the wealthiest men in the world the wealthiest people in the world are investors and builders and creators and when you look at the asset management industry of the 107 trillion dollars of assets women control only one percent of that which is crazy because we're 50 percent of the population and so this book teaches women how to it goes through an entire evolution the philosophy of being a bad bitch and it and it also brings in the ability, the permission for women to be powerful, unapologetically powerful and rich 
by building and investing in the next billion dollar companies, which I believe are going to be female led businesses that understand and address the diversity and needs of the rising female population. Amen, sister. You are speaking my language. That's why I love having you on this show. You know, we just produced a film that's coming out called Show Her the Money. And it's about that we get less than 2% of venture capital funding, just like you're saying, and how more women need to invest in venture capital. That's where the money is. That's where the excitement is. That's where we're going to build our wealth like nobody's business, like, you know, going forward because that has not been the past. And I love that there's leaders like yourself creating that pathway. I want to talk about how you got into this arena as an investor and into that venture capital world because you you were sharing with me, you're coming from uh, Miami to us today, but you were actually born in Wisconsin. Tell me about that and how did that impact what you're doing today? Because I imagine it did. Yeah, well, the one of the earliest memories I have growing up was being a one of the only Asian girls in a very white neighborhood in Wisconsin and the feeling of being an outsider of never belonging of never being accepted and in some ways I carried that through with me for a large part of my life and I found that the way for me to get accepted was through accomplishments was through working hard was through achieving and achieving and achieving and being that perfect girl. And while that got me really, really far, there was a certain point at which I realized that external achievement, external validation does not automatically translate to enoughness, to feeling worthy and good enough. And so I did a lot of exploration in my life to do the inner work to understand what's the disconnect between success and enoughness. And actually my first podcast was called the enoughness podcast, where it did explore that question of how much is enough? When is it ever enough? And we live in a society, a capitalistic society that basically grounds us in scarcity that makes us all feel like we are not enough until we get this award, achieve this job title, you know, get this house, make this amount of money. We are constantly bombarded with with essentially just media messages that tell us you don't have enough, you are not enough, you need more, you need more, you need more. But as part of this system, what's ended up happening is that we fall into hype cycles where uh, Silicon Valley, I think, really capitalized on this, which was like, you know, the the hyped up, you know, startup that's that's like led by this bro, you know, crypto is a perfect example of how this happened. I was listening to this conversation the other day by these two guys who were talking about pudgy penguins and squiggles and bored apes. And I'm like, I don't understand. I don't understand this language and I don't understand how a pudgy penguin is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. But crypto is another example of a financial system where women have been left out because, of course, women didn't get into the the majority of women didn't get into the crypto vernacular because they don't understand, like, where's the value? Just because there's money in it doesn't mean that this is energetically something that I want to invest in. And and what we find is that money is purely a reflection of the value of what people perceive it to be. And for far too long, men have defined what is valuable in this system and in this the past economic season it was the things that are valuable is where it's over inflated valuations right this is pre pre crypto crash pre you know all all of the all of the crashes that have happened recently and it's what what we're realizing is that that foundation isn't strong and it really also used a a system of segregation, of separating that says there are some people on the inside, you know, venture capital very quickly became a boys club. It's like, okay, the people who get the best access to deals are the men who are smoking together, drinking together, hanging out together, partying together. And women were seen as objects as a part of that system. And we've heard so many stories of women just being, you know, models being hired to join the Silicon Valley parties and these were these were the venture capitalists that we looked up to and and i for one don't look up to that i don't respect um people who 
create walls rather than break them down, um, rather than connecting and creating bridges. I don't respect systems that prey on people's fear and scarcity. I don't respect um, investments into companies that are not creating good in the world, um, that are not good for the community, for our children, for the the people, the people in this world that are not the one percent. I love and what so you're saying I, because you're speaking from such a woman's perspective, which is what we need in that venture capital world. Like you said, investing in things that are going to make the world a better place, and. I'm so excited that there's this acceleration of female founded funds that women can get it behind. And it's those female founded funds that are investing in women and LGBTQ and people of color that have all been left behind. And so thank goodness for the new female founded funds. And we just need to get more women out there investing in those funds. I know you're an investor. You have such an incredible background that led you up to being an investor. I mean, right out of Yale, uh, I understand you worked for a hedge fund unusual for a woman. You have to tell me, how did you get involved in that? And then I also want to know about you had a company that you built up and you got absorbed by a billion dollar fintech company. Tell us about those two things. It's so unusual for women. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I've always been driven by challenge and I have always wanted to challenge myself to do hard things and create change. And so I went into Wall Street right after college and I um, I realized very quickly that that was not a place I could maximize my impact. And so I took the leap into entrepreneurship, even though I didn't have a background in tech, I didn't have a background in venture capital, I didn't really have any sort of um, entrepreneurial background, but and I- And no woman I, does, by the way. <laughs> no, no, no woman has an experience at venture capital. Every one of them that jumps in said, I knew nothing about this before I started in it. So, you know, you're not alone. Hopefully the younger generation of women will be uh, subject to learning about it at a younger age, uh, but, you know, women just haven't been in it uh, up, up until recently, into the past few years, really. And you're among the first. Thank you. Yeah. And it's and it's more of a an exercise in trusting yourself that I've realized in believing in yourself. And we as women often talk about this thing of imposter syndrome, of feeling like you're a fraud. And I think starting to release that, which imposter syndrome basically comes from a feeling of not being good enough, of striving for an impossible standard of perfection, which is what I learned as a gymnast, a perfect 10 gymnast. I, um, what I, The pressure that I had coming from an immigrant background and really feeling like failure was not possible for me. But I, I took that risk because I felt like I had a bigger mission and I knew I had a bigger purpose on this world. And I wasn't sure where that where that came from, but it was just a knowing. And so I I had learned by that point to trust myself to fall and get back up again, no matter what happened. And I do attribute that to my gymnastics training, where I say that the most valuable lesson I learned from gymnastics was the ability to fall. And when you can fall in front of hundreds of thousands of people and experience the shame and the embarrassment and the humiliation, physical and and emotional pain, and you have to find some strength within yourself to put a smile on your face, get back up again and say the show must go on. That is what being an entrepreneur is like. <laughs> that is what being an investor is like. That is a because- great analogy. <laughs> the The markets go up, the markets go down, you know, people's the uh, desires change, the the market conditions change, and somehow you have to find the grounding within yourself to say, I trust myself to get through whatever I need to get through to get to where I want to go, where I believe the world needs to go. And, and so, what, what was that company that you built up and sold? Tell me a little bit about it. 
So that company was called She Works, and it was a community of over 20,000 female entrepreneurs. And it was a events and community platform that was really focused on helping women get access to venture capital. And this was pre-Me Too. Um, and I used what I knew best, which was really facilitating conversation, um, facilitating connection to change the dynamic with which women connected with investors. Because usually there is a very uneven power dynamic, which was the person with the checkbook has the power and women were not getting funding. And, you know, we're still working on that challenge, obviously, right now. But I facilitated these breakfast conversations, these events where they were sitting at the same table and it was a conversation about learning. So the investor would come in and share their knowledge and create organic connections with the women. And we ended up facilitating about 50 million in venture capital funding, angel funding for female led startups through just community. And so that company was sold to a billion dollar fintech company. And that was um, part of this vision of really democratizing access to capital. And and part of my own realization of I wanted to take the experience that I had as an entrepreneur and go to the next level of this mission, which was really becoming an investor and now writing the checks into these female-led companies. Because at the end of the day, we talk all the time about the funding gap. Women only getting 2% of funding. We're almost like we're almost like numb to that statistic. We're like, when is that number going to change? But I realized that in order for that number to change, we actually need to change the types of check writers who are putting money into companies. Because if more women are writing checks or more women are realizing that investing is a way to vote with your dollar and get wealthy and create impact, then that is going to change the types of companies, the types of leaders that get funded. I love that. That is like the perfect soundbite. I'm going to use that for our film because that is what Show Her the Money, our film, is about. It's about we are never moving that 2% needle until more women are investing. You are so right. We're voting with our checkbook. And the more women that invest in other women and their amazing ideas and innovations that otherwise will not get funded by men, that's that's what's going to change. That's really literally what's going to save the world, getting more women funded with their amazing ideas and innovations that will help the planet. So you couldn't have put that better. Tell me, how did you create Bad Bit- Bitch uh, Empire and what that's about? Yeah, so the Bad Bitch Empire was birthed while I was writing the Bad Bitch Business Bible. And it was, you know, it was it was part of this mission of realizing that I alone cannot write all the checks, you know, and and this is part of, I think, the, the new understanding of collaboration amongst women, because I think in the previous generation, there was this queen bee syndrome of one woman there's only one room room for one woman at the top. And we are entering this new paradigm where women are realizing we're tired of standing on that mountain alone. <laughs> we are tired of doing everything ourselves. And if we're going to actually create change, we need to do this together in a community, in a collaborative setting. Because by the way, that is how men have done it this whole time. That's how men have done business. You know, when Billy's raising money for his company and he wants Bob to put money into his company, Bob says, well, I got to get Joe and Jim and James and Tom into this deal too, because they recognize that by getting more men in the game, they all become more successful. And I think women are finally starting to realize that. And that's what I wanted within the the ethos of the bad bitch empire. And that's why one of our core values is collaboration. It's that in order for us to really create the next generation of bad bitch businesses and become unapologetically wealthy ourselves to then put the money into the areas that we want to see change, you have to do it together. And so the Bad Bitch Empire is a community, it's a movement, It we have uh, educational courses, we have the Bad Bitch Empire Fund, um, the mentorship, the opportunities, the podcast, the media, where you, the, the Bible, where you can learn, first and foremost, how you 
how do you embrace being a bad bitch yourself? Because I genuinely believe that as women, we are wonderful at helping other people, but we also need to fill our own cup first. We need to be unapologetically willing to love ourselves, pour into ourselves, invest in ourselves. And that is what's going to create the abundance mindset to ultimately say, I'm going to, now I can pour into all these other women as well. And in fact, part of my own journey as I'm pouring into myself is being around other women who are bad bitches, who are not afraid to speak up, not afraid to challenge the status quo. And so I think I, I really birthed it because I wanted to attract those types of women into my orbit. I wanted to attract women of a similar energetic frequency, um, of a similar um, boldness and courageousness, women who have had the, the, the bravery to step out of their comfort zone and challenge a status quo, break through barriers. And that's what it's, that's what it's really become. And I'm, I'm really excited for where it's going to go. Um, our fund has just launched and we've made our first couple investments out of it. And we are more and more excited to bring in more women and more male allies. We have male allies in our fund as well. And we'd love men who support and champion bad bitches and this movement. Um, and we're excited to continue making more investments out of the fund and training this next generation of investors. Well, Lisa, I love, love, love what you're doing. I love you are such a wise visionary. And uh, I love the bad bitch empire concept and your whole philosophy about us uh, all coming together to collaborate. And that's the way we're going to move that needle. Absolutely. How can people find you? I, I assume you're on LinkedIn. And then mm -hmm. how do they find your website and, and the other social handles? Yeah, so you can go to badbitchempire.com and that is where you'll find access to the Bad Bitch Business Bible, the podcast, the fund, um, our investment courses, our build wealth courses. And by the way, when you purchase the Bad Bitch Business Bible, you will get access to um, some incredible bonuses, inc including our investing masterclass. And you can find me at lisacarmenwang.com and on Instagram at Lisa Carmen Wang. Lisa Carmen Wang everywhere. So it's pretty easy to find. Just look up Bad Bitch Empire, look up Lisa Carmen Wang, and you, you cannot miss it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Please be sure to check out Bad Bitch Empire and go follow Lisa uh, on LinkedIn and elsewhere. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in this week. Of course, you can find uh, us at SheAngelInvestors.com. And of course, we're on social media. And I'm on LinkedIn, Catherine Gray. Um, and our Instagram for the podcast, Catherine Gray, Invest in Her. We appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to pick up the book as well, The Bad Bitch Business Bible. It will be out when this airs and uh, visit badbitchempire.com. Thank you so much, Lisa. I love the work you're doing. I'm cheering you on and let's do some great things together. Thank you.